Hi friends, this is Gautam. In this session, I am going to discuss about CCNA tricky questions and answer. So last session, I asked one question. So in this session, I am going to discuss about answer for that question. Let's see. So this is my question. So I am using two Cisco routers and one layer 2 switch. So layer 2 switch is just plug and play. So R1 router connecting towards layer 2 switch. I am using 192.168.100.0/24 network. And R2 router connecting towards the layer 2 switch. I am using 172.16.0.0/24 network. So IP routing. IP routing has been disabled on both R1 router and R2 router. Now ping from R1 router to R2 router. So can anyone explain how the ping is successful in this case? So this is my question. So most of the people are saying R1 router it won't ping R2 router. But answer is R1 router will ping R2 router. So let's see in practical. So in R1 router, here fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface, I will assign the IP as 192.168.100.1 and R2 router connecting towards the layer 2 switch. So this interface, I will assign the IP as 172.16.0.1. So now normally how ping will be working. So normally in if you are trying to give ping and give destination IP means in backend it will be working through ICMP plus R. If the destination MAC address they don't know means it will generate the R packet. Once learn the MAC address then ICMP protocol will be functioning. So normally if you are trying to ping destination IP in backend ICMP plus R. These two protocols are functioning. So here R1 to layer 2 switch is different network and R2 to layer 2 switch is different network. So both of them are different network. Normally one network to one network if you want to communicate means definitely we can use router or layer 3 switch. So we know everyone knows these things. But here R1 router and R2 router both of them are connecting single layer 2 switch as well as this both of them are comes under same broadcast domain. So what will happen when R1 router try to ping R2 router. So R2 router IP is 172.16.0.1. It will check whether the MAC address they know or not. They don't know means immediately R1 router will generate the R packet. In that R packet source IP should be 192.168.100.1 and destination IP is 172.16.0.1. And source MAC address is R1 router interface FA0.0. MAC interface MAC address destination MAC address they don't know so they will put FFF that is broadcast MAC address so the R packet will send to this switch switch this is a normal layer to switch no configuration is required just plug and play only so what will happen if that broadcast packet will be received on this port means except receiving port it will send to the rest of the ports so here it will send this port the R request will be coming to R2 router. R2 router will check the R request who is 172.16.0.1. So immediately R2 router reply this is my IP address and this is my MAC address. It will reply to the R packet. Now the packet will be sent to the layer 2 switch. Layer 2 switch will send to the R1 router. Now R1 router learn the MAC address of R2 interface. Same like R2 router also learn the MAC address of R1. So now the ping will be happen. Normally one host to one host if ping will be happen through MAC address. With the help of MAC address only ping will be happen. So we know the layer 3 address as well as we know the layer 2 address. Then only ping will be successful. Okay. Let's we can see in practical. So I created this lab in GNS3. So I created this lab in GNS3. So just capture R1 to layer 2 switch. I am capturing through Wireshark. Okay. Next R2 router to layer 2 switch also I capture. 
through white shock. Okay, in R1 router, I already assigned the IP address for fast Ethernet 0 bar 0. This interface is connecting towards the light to switch. So I assign IP address 192.168.100.1 and also I disable IP routing, show IP route. So IP routing table is not there because I disable. So how to disable routing table, you know. So if you don't know, I will tell you that command. In global mode, you should give no IP routing. That's it. Same thing I configured in auto route also. So FA 0 bar 0 interface connecting towards the light to switch. I will assign the IP as 172.16.0.1 and IP routing is disabled. Okay. So now both Wireshark I am capturing that packets. So first R1 router I will give debug or for capturing the lock. Same as I have to given R2 router also debug IP or sorry debug or So before that we have to check ARP entry, show IP ARP, they know the is physical interface IP and MAC address only, they don't know about the R1, same like in R1, they don't know about R2 IP, see, okay, now I try to ping 172.16.0.1, see, Ping is success. Success rate is 80%. So first two packet is dropping. So everyone will know because of the R using R packet they find out the destination MAC address. So for that reason first packet will be dropping. So rest of the packet is successful. Let's I will ping once again 172.16.0.1. See I am able to ping. Okay. Now let's we can see the log packets so first of all it will creating the ARP request so they don't know about the 172.16.0.1 destination MAC address so it send the ARP request source IP is from R1 router it will send this source request ARP request so source IP is 192.168.100.1 and this is the MAC address for that interface see 192.168.100.1 fast ethernet 0 bar 0 interface MAC address is this one so this is a source MAC address and destination IP is 172.16.0.1 and 000, 000 000 indicates it's sending the broadcast MAC address or request. So this is a request sent from R1 router and this is the reply from the R2 router. See received reply. So 172.16.0.1 and this is my MAC address and destination IP is ours 192.168.100.1. So it send back the reply. Now we can see show IP ARP. Now we can learn the MAC address of R2 router. Same log we will get on R2 router also. We can see show IP ARP. So R2 router also learn about the R1 router MAC address. Okay. Let's we can stop the white shock capture in JNS3. So in our packet we can see who is 172.16.0.1 this is a ARP request this is a ARP destination IP and 000 indicates destination MAC address is broadcast MAC address and this is replay from the R2 router same vice versa R2 router also send ARP request and learn about the R1 MAC address see same vice versa R1 also Sorry, R2 also sending the request from destination IP 192.168.100.1 and R2 router will replay to that one. So once R1 router and R2 router can learn the MAC address of each other, then the ping will be successful. R1 router to R2 router, the ping will be successful, vice versa R2 to R1. So normally the ping will work based upon the layer 2 address as well as layer 3 address. So without layer 2 address it won't able to ping. 
so in this scenario both routers are comes under same broadcast domain so that's why the ping will be successful if it's different broadcast domain means that is different scenario it won't get ping so here everyone can notice one thing both router r1 and r2 router i disable ip routing and it will act as an host but i did not configure any default gateway for both r1 as well as r2 so because this both of them are comes under same broadcast domain and router cisco routers will force to act as an host this is not an original pc but i will force to act as an host but i did not configure gateway for both r1 and r2 but both of them are comes under same broadcast domain so the r packet will send to the switch switch will forward to the r2 so r2 replay to that r packet so once both r1 and r2 learn the mac address it will start working so r1 can able to ping r2 as well as r2 can able to ping r1 so for my question this is the answer and this is the explanation i hope everyone can understand this question and answer so this question is in production network they won't configure this type of scenario so just entry point of view they will ask this type of question so if you are strong in basics means definitely you can able to answer these questions okay friends i hope you can understand this this concept and it will be so you can understand this concept so thanks for watching my videos so if you like my videos means please subscribe for further updates and share to your friends so if you have any queries so drop me mail to my mail id fgautamraj1 at gmail.com thank you friends thank you for watching my videos